Good morning, everybody. Good Monday morning, everybody. This morning, we needed to bring the Colts lady in. And we noticed they were close by and Brenda quick ran down because of the fog and whatever. She wanted to get a picture, I'm sure. So as she was running down, I told her, well, you go down there and I'll run over and grab the halters and the ropes and we'll get these guys and gals back in the barn. We hope to do a bunch of work with them this week and maybe even get the colts started with Ken on the sled. We'll see what happens. It's been several days since you guys have seen Bree and uh, to tell you the truth, it's been several days since we've seen her up close also. Brenda's down petting her now and uh, let's ask her what she thinks. What do you think of Bree? I think she looks beautiful. I had to take this photo op to come down here because I don't know if it's going to show on camera, but it was just beautiful with the fog in the background and it's pretty far off, but it was just beautiful. So I had to take the moment. Hopefully I got a couple good pictures. And they're so friendly this morning. They usually are, but uh, great opportunity. We weren't planning on filming right at this moment. I haven't even combed my hair yet, but you know, you gotta take moments as they come in life sometimes. Oh my goodness, lady. Seriously? <coughs> the colts are all definitely friendlier than lady. Lady, she's pretty smart. She needs a haircut. Just in case you grab one. Okay. Um, I just heard a howl, a owl hooting in the background, and I can hear um, the cows off somewhere mooing a little bit this morning. It's just an incredibly nice morning. Did I get it? Yep. Come on, early, early bird. Bree looks like a whole different little foal. She's so much darker. We drove home last night and just noticed a difference as we drove by how she's changed. there that Bree doesn't love going through the fence. Instead of going with her mom, apparently.
can't get over how easy these horses are to work with. They're wonderful. We have an awful lot of things to do today, but one of the first things I want to do is take this spreader of mine over to an Amish friend of mine, and I need some work done on this. The troubles I'm having, and just the other day, I spread and cleaned up all my manure, so it's a good time to take it over and leave it for a few days while he works on it. But um, the the apron, which is the ch bed chain that drags the manure back to the beaters, has been giving me a lot of troubles, in, especially in heavy manure like the cow manure. What happens is two dogs here on this big this wheel right here that runs that chain, and they're they're slipping. They're not grabbing. They're not not turning that when it's really heavy. So he's got to do some work on this. So that's what we're going to do first thing this morning. Um, we have a little bit of issue with this particular spreader. Some ways I like this spreader, and a lot of ways I do not like this spreader. This is a Lancaster spreader, and I, this is a fairly old one. Um, they, I'm sure I've made a lot of improvements to them, but right the way it's set up now, this chain, which runs the beaters, always is turning. You can't take the old spreaders, you could lift this chain off the big pulley. This one you can't, it has a clutch right here to kick it in and out of gear. So because of that, I need to, to hitch this behind my pickup truck and take it up to my Amish friend and he's gonna fix it. But I don't know, I may disconnect this chain just so it's not running all the time going down the road. But anyways, that's one thing I do not like about the spreader, but overall, it's been quite a good spreader. Is this a horse-drawn spreader? Uh, this is a ground-driven spreader, can be used with horses or a tractor because it doesn't have the front wheels on it. It's just a trailer type. So you need a cart to use this spreader when you're using horses. So. Okay, we'll keep you updated. I just say forward at the very end. Oh, no whatever. Just... So we're very fortunate to be living in an area where there's a lot of Amish. So I'm taking my spreader to one Amish guy uh, we're back through. I'm gonna stop at another guy, Amish guy and drop these apples off. We've got six bags of, of drops of apples and he actually does uh, make cider. So we're gonna drop them off so he can grind these up and press these for cider for us. So, I ended up uh, needing to, as I was leading Lady over this morning, I realized she lost one front shoe. And her other front shoe needs to be, had to be reset quite bad. I was looking back here, um, July, it was actually July 1st when I put the front shoes on. So it's been a little, it's been over two months now. Time just flies so fast. We do things on a particular order. It's just amazing how fast things get out of hand and how fast you're just, Try to keep up, but you just can't. So anyways, it's been over two months now, even since I put her front shoes on. So I, she had lost one, and I put the, the two front shoes, reset them, then back on. I trimmed Lady's um, mane. Um, because as of right now, next Monday, is when our tentative plan of taking Baron down um, to the veterinarian to do the, to do, collect the semen on him. He's going to have to have his shoes pulled off, and it will have been um, six weeks since we put them on. So I'm just going to pull them off and uh, make sure everything's good with his feet, and I'm sure they will be, quite sure anyways, and uh, we will head down. I know a lot of people actually said, well, you should make sure there's nothing wrong with him. Well, there is nothing wrong with him. <laughs> but uh, 
that's my opinion of it all. I think he's a completely sound horse, great horse, great breeding stock even. Um, he has had some issues with his feet not growing quite level because they weren't trimmed properly. Um, that problem, I'm quite sure, is, is going to work itself out perfectly fine. Um, so, and also, this is going to be done at a veterinarian clinic. Clinic, so there's, I'm certain that those vets down there would say, tell me, and maybe they will, but I highly doubt it. Tell me, you know, this horse is not a good prospect for doing this, but we shall find that out when we get down there. So anyways, let's uh, put her away. And uh, I'm thinking I might try to trim Bree's hind, uh, Bree, Bree's feet all around, just give him a really quick, her a really quick trimming. Um, just so uh, we, you know, we keep those feet level. And uh, I really haven't been fooling with her feet anywhere near as much as I should have. I'm gonna work while we talk here. Um, it's so many people that have horses more for pleasure than actual work. Oops. I better take this off here. There's people that have horses more for pleasure, not so much for work. They actually have the time to do all the things with their feet like they should. And I am definitely promoting handle Colt's feet as much as possible so that when they get older, they're good with their feet. I am a terrible uh, representation of that because I do it, I just don't get to it. Um, I don't even have a hoof pick that I know of because I would never take the time first thing in the morning before I go to work to pick up all their feet to pick dirt and stuff out of their hooves. A lot of people do that. Great practice, but not very practical practice in a real working farm or a logging operation like I have. And you'll notice that I use the stocks whenever possible, almost always. And a couple reasons for that. Uh, you know, just the fact that um, their feet haven't been handled as much as some people's horses' feet have. They don't, they don't pick their feet up as good as they should. Stocks solve that problem. Also, just the danger of fooling with the horse's feet on the ground and the hard work of it all is just another reason why we use stocks as much as possible. And if you guys don't lock stocks, well, that's your um, prerogative, I guess. But I personally love them. And I think my horses do too. Back up, lady. Back up. Hemi. Hemi. I think I'm gonna have you come right here, Brenda. Okay, so I have not touched her feet for probably at least six weeks, my guess. It's been a while. She's been outside quite a lot lately. So we haven't been fooling with her. So I'm just gonna give her a really, really, really quick trimming just to see if we can flatten things out, make sure things are coming along good, and just some more practice of her picking her feet up. I don't expect her to do perfect. I kind of expect to do a little bit poorly, actually, but uh, <laughs> she's a little snot even right now. But so, Ben, I want you to. What I want you to do is hold his halter, put your hand right over his nose, just like that. That way, he won't be able to bite you her. or bite me, her. And uh, I'm just gonna go and give her a real quick <sighs> trimming. I hope. Aubrey. Oh, Back up a little bit, Burberry. So I'm just going around, just taking this very outside edge off. There we go. I'm trying to keep as level as possible. 
really most of it I can take off with a rasp. One down, three to go. With a hoof knife, I'm just basically cleaning the dirt out and just trying to see what I need to do. And that toe needs to be taken down a little bit. That's just a very outside edge. So I'm gonna do that with the nippers, but I'm not gonna touch the heels. I'm just gonna do the, the toe with these, and then with the rasp, I'll level everything up. It's difficult when she's next to lady here. Come here. Damn it. Damn it. You know what to do. Hoop, hoop, hoop. 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 It's amazing the difference between her and a full size horse. Hoop, hoop. Hoop, 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 hoop. It's okay, Bray. Okay. 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 Hoop. 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 What I'm trying to kind of do, especially on these heels, especially with Baron's issue being here, his daughter, I'm gonna have these heels level. I'm not gonna take them down much at all. I'm just gonna keep them level. And uh, get this toe leveled off, good. Round it up a little bit. It's so hard because they're so small for me to be comfortable, I need to have that hoof so much higher to work on. But for her to be comfortable, it has to be down very low. So I'm kind of trying for that halfway between to make it comfortable for both, for both of us. Okay. So let's swap side, Brenda. We'll real quick do the same thing all over again. Let me see your foot. Let me see your foot. A lot of ways it'd actually be really nice to have somebody else helping me so that just one person could hold the hoof. One person could just do the work really quick so that we could keep it lower for her sake. It's very difficult for me to stay, squat down this low, to keep it down where she would like to have it. So I just cut the, the extra off her toe. Now I'm just going to level it all out. One thing about a small hoof like this, it doesn't take much rasping to, to get her done. Good, good. Now if I was wanted a really, really, really nice job, I'd work the front of the hoof too and kind of run it down that way, but that's really not the point at this stage. Come here. Hoop. 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 
this hoof here, I don't even think I'm going to do anything except for rasp it. It really doesn't need anything. It's uh, not that grown out that bad. I'm just going to flatten it down. Come here. Good girl. A lot of people that are newcomers to horses, I've, over the years, so many people are so concerned about doing it wrong with the shoeing and trimming process. And, uh, you know, I like to tell them that horses are fairly forgiving as far as what we do. Keep the hoof flat. Don't have any big edges on it so that they're more apt to get caught on something and break the hoof make it rasp it smooth um yeah i i'm not i'm not sure so i'm not even going to continue even telling you how to do it but just talk to your shoers that have done a lot of it and just jump right in and try to do it it's not that difficult and remember also when you have a young horse especially all this stuff that you're doing even if you're not doing a lot you're at least teaching them to lift their feet up and hold their feet and that's worth so much. Anyways, let's continue on with the day. Oh. Careful step.
Well, I guess that's it, except for unloading. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for coming along today. We, I do have a newsletter that comes out on Tuesdays. If you're interested, feel free to sign up for that. It is free, and it just gives us little, share, we share little tidbits of what's going on around here that may not be on the videos. So um, that's in the description below the video if you want to check that out. Have a great day.